While I was a monk, I received a light that revealed to me the intimate symbology of the life-giving cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The bottom of the Holy Cross touches the earth, while the top of the cross points toward heaven. The top of the cross that points toward heaven is where the three branches dwell. The three branches are each really distinct from one another, but they share one nature and are united. This is an image of the Most Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who are three distinct persons in one divine nature, who dwell in heaven. The first branch is the Father, the second branch is the Son, and the third branch is the Holy Spirit. Now you will notice that it is the second branch, the Son, who unites the heavens and the earth, as the top part of the branch touches the heavens, while the bottom part touches the earth. This shows how Christ, through the hypostatic union, unites divinity and humanity in his person. The divinity dwells in heaven, whereas the humanity touches the earth. Ephesians 1.10 says, To unite all things in him, that is Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. So the bottom of the cross symbolizes the sacred humanity of Christ. The top part of the branch signifies the divinity of Christ, and the middle of the branch signifies his personhood. Now through the hypostatic union, the height and the depths are united. Jesus Christ is Jacob's ladder. Thy all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne. Wisdom 1850. Taking on human form at the incarnation, being obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Philippians 2.8. He then descended into Sheol. Ephesians 4.9. Then he rose in glory, clothing himself with the imperishable. 1 Corinthians 15.53 and Romans 6.4. He ascended into heaven. Acts 1.11, where he is seated at the Father's right hand, Hebrews 1.3, bringing our humanity to the indescribable dwellings of divinity. If we take a look at the second branch alone, the branch representing Jesus Christ, we can actually see that his entire life is outlined. If we start in the top left-hand corner of the branch, we see that wisdom was dwelling in heaven. But the branch then points down to the earth, telling us that wisdom leapt down to the earth in the incarnation. The branch then goes from the earth to under the earth, signifying that Christ died for our sins on the cross, and his soul descended into hell. The bottom of the branch is under the earth and remains there, signifying Christ remains under the earth in Sheol for three days. Then the branch goes from under the earth to back on the earth, signifying Christ's resurrection on the third day. Then the branch goes from the earth back to the heavens, showing Christ's ascension into heaven. Finally, the top of the branch is in heaven, positioned to the right of the first branch, showing Christ is in heaven seated at the right hand of the Father. So here we see the entire life of Christ symbolized in the cross. In John 14, 6, Christ says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now Christ's humanity is the way to the divinity. Through his humanity, we encounter the divine person, the Son of God, who is called truth since he proceeds by intellect. And through the hypostatic union, we are united to divinity and brought to the divine life and become partakers of the divine nature. So the sacred humanity is the way, the Son of God is the truth, and the divine nature is the life we hope to partake of. And this can be symbolized in the ascent up the cross. Notice that the cross appears as a sword thrusted down from heaven, puncturing the earth. In Matthew 10, 34, Christ says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. The sword he brings is a cross, which puts an end to the punishment of sin. It is the sword that kills the serpent. The cross also appears like a key pointing toward heaven. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ merited us the forgiveness of sins and sanctifying grace, which allows us access to heaven. So the cross is a sword that kills sin, it's the key that opens us to heaven, and it's Jacob's ladder that serves as the way to unite us to the truth to bring us to everlasting life. Finally, notice that the cross stretches out in all directions, signifying the universal salvific will of God, who desires all men to be saved by his sacrifice on the cross. 1 Timothy 2.4 Christ died with outstretched arms, welcoming all nations to his hug of love and salvation. The cross possesses breadth, length, height, and depth, connecting with Ephesians 3.18-19, which says, Power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The knowledge of the breadth, length, height, and depth of the cross is a perfect revelation of the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge and brings us to the divine life. In short, the cross reveals the Trinity, the hypostatic union, the life of the God-man Jesus Christ, the end to sin, the entry to heaven, and the universal call to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. I hope this was a fruitful meditation. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to Duong on YouTube and follow at Catholic Duong on Twitter. The special light that revealed this symbology to me came from the hands of Mother Mary, Mediatrix of All Graces. So I urge you to pray the rosary today.